people don't know this, James. I don't even know if you know this. My middle name is Eugene. I'm Barry Eugene Sanderson, and I'm named after Coach Stalley. So, uh, Coach, I want you to know how much respect I have for you and what an honor it is. So when I tell people what my full name is, I get to tell a story and say, you know, I'm named after Gene Stallings, and everybody says, wow. So uh, I appreciate that, and I respect it ain't, you a it lot. It ain't that great. <laughs> hey, Barry, I tell that to everybody, everybody except Wimp. He doesn't really believe it, but I tell everybody that. <laughs> so, so how does can Dad make coffee? He said you guys were in the same uh, cottage out there, but Pat Dye kept screwing it up every morning. Can he well, make he, coffee? He, he, it either make it too strong or too weak, but uh, Webb did a pretty good job of keeping it going. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Which surprised I me told a him, I bit. told him Pat Dye talked his ear, talked our ears off. <laughs> How you guys doing this morning? We're doing good. We're doing great. Well, uh, 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 Webb kept staying in line. He wasn't very good fisherman, but he tried, but he I don't think caught anything. But no, we had a great trip with that. We did a lot of fun things, but I think the float trip was probably the thing that we enjoyed the most. Well, yeah. uh, we we had the over under at three on how many fish he could catch. So you said he caught none. We all we all <laughs> went under, uh, coach. So uh, and we also he says he's got a pistol at home, but you could rob his house because he wouldn't hit you if he shot. Would he? He didn't hit anything when he shot a gun, did he, coach? Well, he he didn't do very good, but he did better than I did because I didn't shoot at all. I sort of lost my balance and. I've had a little stroke problem a time or two, and so anyway, I watched him. But at least he shot, and he shot at it, and I didn't even shoot at it, so he was ahead of me. Exactly. Uh, that was uh, that was some that was some float trip we made, wasn't it? Six it coaches. It was just an outstanding uh, trip. It really was. I I saw things, and saw country that I'd never seen before, never been in that part of the country, and, and uh, what a joy it was to uh, to see some what real Montana looks like in it. And we really had a good time. What uh, What do you think about that plane Jimmy had? That's pretty nice, wasn't it? Woo. Oh, you get used to that, <laughs> couldn't you? Yeah, you sure could. There's no doubt about it. Big old private um, plane that, that, that nine people could sit comfortably. And uh, then they had a little galley and we picked something to eat. And before you knew it, we were there. And before we knew it, we were back home. Did y'all have a safe trip when y'all let me out in Paris? Yeah, we did. We had, had a good trip back, and we got back in an hour and 15 minutes from your place. That's yeah. pretty quick. Yeah, well, that thing flew off the fire. flew about a little old 500 miles an hour. Just as tell, uh, uh, Babes, tell our listeners about Parrish, Texas. We can talk about the trip some more. Barry may have a question, too. But tell our, nobody ever asks you this. They always, when they call you, they ask you about football. Uh, talk, tell us about your farm and what you've done with it and so forth? Well, it, it first of all, it took me 40 years to pay for it. And uh, when I was coaching at, <laughs> at Texas A&M the first time, I just wanted some land. And a uh, man by the name of Henry Clay, the banker there in Paris, said the best place to buy land in, in Texas is in Lamar County. And I said, well, I'm from Lamar County. He said he had two pieces of property in Lamar County. And so anyway, uh, one of them was more a lot more expensive than I could afford. And anyway, I bought this one, and and uh, the children have enjoyed it. Johnny enjoyed it, and uh, uh, we, as a rule of thumb, raise around a hundred mother cows and uh, uh, raise the hay. And, and it's just a place that all, our whole family's enjoyed. Have you got a lake on there? Yeah, I've got a good fishing lake. Got about a well, I've got two. I've got one about fifteen acre lake, and then I've got one about four acre lake and both of them are well stocked you've got to make a decision on what you're going to do with you whether or not you want big bass or just bass and uh, uh the children and grandchildren they won't see that cart go under so i, I <laughs> decided that we would just have lots of fish rather than just a few big ones and uh, that's yeah. we've sort of ruined it as far as catching big bass you don't catch many but you do catch a lot of fish so you'd say right. that Dad could actually catch a fish if he fished in your lakes over there, <laughs> uh, Coach? I'm, I'm afraid that if Wimpy, he, he would catch it, he would throw it all off on the bank, he'd pull on it so hard. <laughs> I watched him fly fishing. I tell you, he can do a lot of things. Fly fishing is not his forte. Well, he had one of our uh, callers 
said he need to, I didn't tell him this. I guess he gets the law, though, put some corn on there, Daddy. He said, if you put corn on there, those fish will eat that alive, but it's against I the law. I, put, I couldn't. I, didn't, I learned it. I threw it out pretty good. I just couldn't set the hook. I, I didn't know how to set the hook, babes. Well, I, I know, do- but you, you, first of all, the, the current was going pretty fast, and they put us in an area where we wouldn't get hung up, but I don't think there's a whole lot of fish in the area where we fished. I did get two or three bites, and you just got to, when you when you set that hook, you just got to ease it, and you can't just jerk it. You'll jerk it right out of their mouth. First of all, the trout weren't very big. Uh, uh, babe, go ahead, Barry. Coach, I did, I, we will have to ask you a couple football questions, or our listeners will, will get mad as When you got a, a quarterback like Tua, uh, you know, and he's so talented. Uh, sometimes you get away from the running game. How, how do you balance that? A guy that has an arm like that, but you also got to be able to run the football. And I think Alabama maybe tell you last year they didn't run the ball as effective uh, when they really needed to late in the year against the big time teams. How, how do you balance that when you got such a dynamic thrower? Well, first of all, if you, you want to emphasize being effective on third down. Uh, you've got to run the football, but. If you got third and four, third and five, third and six, and have somebody that can complete that pass, make a first down, because what you want to do is keep the chains growing. And uh, what a, they got two talented quarterbacks, and I think they're going to do extremely well this year. They have, you know, it, it's been 10 or 12 years since Alabama's been an underdog. Uh, so when, when you're the favorite in every game and you're completely well coached, that's a tough combination to beat. And that's, that's what's happening in Alabama right now. They're talented, they're well coached, and that's a tough combination to beat. Can you take? Can you learn from a game? We've already even coached uh, Saban, say, and some of the players that, for whatever reason, I think they've gotten to the Final Four, gotten to the championship game so many times. Maybe they take it, took it for granted uh, that they weren't uh, as laser focused as they needed to be. That that can really help you. It, can it coach as it carries over to next season to make sure that doesn't happen again? Well, first of all, they, they just lost one game, had an outstanding year. How many teams in the, in America would love to uh, have the record that Alabama had this past year? And I know they would like to won the championship game, but uh, what, a, what a great year that they had. And I think that Alabama's going to be extremely good again this year. I've got a grandson playing for Clemson, so I've got to keep up with Clemson, and then I've got to one of my former coaches, coaches of Tennessee, and so I try to keep up with Tennessee. Then one of my former coaches, coaching Cleveland Browns, so I've got quite a few teams that that I try to keep up with. But I think the two best college teams in America right now is going to be Alabama and Clemson. I tell you, I tell you what, uh, Kitchens uh, is making Cleveland Brown the Cleveland Browns behave themselves. He's going in there with a lot of discipline. In fact, one kid, not kid, but player missed his plane and he cut him off a team. Uh, yeah, he's and, going uh, in there, with, he's going in there with some toughness, isn't he? Well, I don't know a whole lot about Cleveland. I do know this, that they're going to be a tougher team physically than they've been in the past. Uh, they've got some talent. They've got a, uh, they've got a good quarterback. And that's where it starts in professional football. Now, if you don't have a quarterback and throw the football, you can be decent, but you're not going to win championships in Alabama. I mean, uh, uh, Cleveland has a good quarterback now. They've picked up a good wide receiver, so I think they're going to be an improved team. Coach, uh, talk a little bit about Clemson and Dabba. So you said you got a grandson there. Obviously, you no know, Clemson's had some success, but he's taking it to, I guess you want to say, another level and keeping it and kept it there. Have you been over there to, to see uh, the facilities and everything that, that Dabo and them have there? Their facilities right now are second to none. They they, they built some facilities and. Uh, and their coaching offices and where the players dress and coaching and, and, and meeting rooms and where they have the meals is just outstanding. I, uh, they have absolutely fabulous facilities. It's not a large town. Clemson's not a large town. The biggest thing about the town is the, is the university. And uh, one of the things that I think Dabo has done. He's hired guys that have good character. I mean, he's got good football players, but you don't see a lot of them having a lot of problems. They, there'll be a problem or two here and there, but as a rule of thumb, uh, he sets the, the tempo on what kind of player that you're going to bring in. They're talented. They, uh, I 
I don't think that they're going to be as good a team defensively as they were last year. They had three or four number one draft choices on the defensive side of the ball, but I think offensively they're going to be a little better. Uh, Kirby Smart leaves Alabama and goes uh, in competition with Alabama, and, of course, a lot of people now, they hate him (laughs) over here because that's the way people get, but – it it's, uh, looks like it's going to boil. You don't ever know, but uh, they're going to be good again. A lot of players in the state of Georgia. And and uh, the one thing about Coach Saban is he continues to have a consistent good recruiting year each year. They're the number one recruiting uh, class in the country year after year after year after year. And uh, I think that Georgia is going to be a good football team. I'd say that right now, in my opinion, they're one of the top four teams uh, a team I think is going to be a little bit better is Texas a and Now, they've got a pretty tough schedule. Uh, but if they can get by some of their tough games, I think they'll be a decent team. I, I think that A&M will win eight games, could possibly win nine, but they've got to play Alabama and Clemson and Georgia, so they've got a pretty good schedule. Uh, Mario Cristobal uh, is bringing Oregon over to play Auburn in the first game. Dad talks about what a difficult first game that is. He's Kind of got, he's talking now. He says, we, quote, and I quote, we play in the Pac-12, so we play teams around Auburn's level week in and week out. We believe we are stronger and faster than well, any other team in America. That's uh, a hoax. That's a ho- He told me, that said that was hoax. He didn't say that. Really? No. It's only- I, I don't, uh, I think Auburn beat Oregon. I think uh, Auburn's going to have a decent football team. Uh, <clears throat> if they can get comfortable with who's playing the quarterback position and uh, I, I think uh, week in, week out, I think Malzahn's done a good job coaching, and so I think Auburn's going to be a better football team than they were last year. Well, there, uh, Beavs and Pat Dye on the big board at Great Southern. Jimmy, Jimmy took good care of us, and and uh, they sell a lot of lumber, and we try to advertise for them. And Beavs, I appreciate you taking time to be on. I know you got a lot to do this morning, just getting back. And uh, well, it, it was. Great trip. I enjoyed being with you, uh, Wimp, and, and uh, you made sure that I was up every morning. I appreciated that, and you had the coffee ready. And it was a it was a fun four days, and uh, I saw some country that I'd never seen before. And I really appreciate old Jimmy Rain for, for lining it up. And we had six ex coaches, and, and uh, uh, I think we enjoyed being with each other. Coach, where, Thanks, before Dick. you go, will you will you tell the listeners? A lot of people here. We're up in Tuscaloosa. It's more, I guess, more Alabama. But, but all the great things that a guy like Jimmy Rain uh, does for for people, uh, not only in the state but really across this country. And what a what a giving, what a good man he is. He's extremely generous. And uh, this past year, he won the Johnny Stallings Award. That that's in uh, Dallas, and it goes to the individual that makes a difference in the community. And Jimmy Range really makes a difference in the community, supports every, everything that needs to be supported. I know I've got a, a daughter and a grandson, a daughter and a husband that lives in the country of Haiti, and uh, he's helped support uh, the different the activities, things that we do there in Haiti. And I, I just can't imagine a good cause that Jimmy Range doesn't help support. Yeah, great man. Well, I'm sorry Dad didn't cook you breakfast, but he did make you coffee. Uh, so uh, we appreciate you being on with us. And like Thanks, Beebs. I appreciate it. I'll talk That's to you. Tell Ruth Ann said hey. I'm glad that you, you fessed up to who you named after. Wim never mentions it, but I'm glad <laughs> that you so. mentioned it. Uh, hey, it's an honor, <laughs> Coach. It's an honor. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Thanks, Beebs. You guys Beebs. have a good day, and, and uh, take care of your mother.